continuing on from our lesson on mean, median, and mode, we're going to look at data. So how can we measure the spread of data? Right now, this is the survey I took of how many slices of pizza, large pizza, you normally eat. And this is my first pe uh, period pizza data. So some eat two slices, and they're pretty happy. Some eat three, some eat four. And we got one kid who goes all the way for eight slices of a large pizza. I think that's the whole pizza. Anyways. So before we learned how to describe this with average, but right now I'm going to go ahead and take a sample because I don't want to use all these data points. It'll be a little overwhelming. And I went ahead and I used a random number generator and it told me to pick 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, which would be that one, and 0.13, which would be that one, 0.16, and 0.17. So I'm taking my sample here from my population of first period and I'm going to get uh, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, and 8. Now if I wanted to find that mean, remember I taught you the short way to find the mean, which is you can rearrange your slices of pizza until you can figure it out. So I'll say, ah, there are too many over here. Let me take off three slices. I'll make that five. I'll put them over here. So I got five slices over here. Take off one slice, make that five. Four. So I've got three plates with four slices, three plates with five slices. I can tell that the average for this, or the mean, is 4.5. So my mean for my sample, so it's an X bar when it's for a sample, is 4.5 slices of pizza. On average, if I pick any kid in my uh, first period, based on my sample, I'm guessing they'll eat four and a half slices of pizza. They actually eat an integer, but this is my estimate, my statistic. All right, so that's the average. But the, besides the average, we often like to describe the spread of data. Pair this to do the spread. So I'm going to create this column of data, and it's two, three, four, four, six, and eight. All right, if I wanted to know how far they were spread apart, uh, one student wisely suggested look at the range, and I could. Yeah, the range is, for this set, 6 slices, because it's 8 minus 2 equals 6 slices. All right? So that's how far apart my uh, hungriest eater and my least hungry eater are. They have a difference of 6 slices on their plates. Okay. So that's one way to describe spread. The problem is, is that it doesn't really describe where a good chunk of the data. So if you were looking at this data, you can see it's kind of tight right around here, right? And this 8's a little further away. So this doesn't have that sort of information. What if I were to take the difference, how far away each point is from the mean? So we're going to say this x bar, all right? And in this case, x bar is 4.5. So 2 minus 4.5, well, you might be tempted to say 2.5. But since 2 is below it, I'm going to say it's 2.5 under, or negative 2.5. Uh, 3 minus 4.5 will be negative 1.5. Then I'll have negative 0.5, negative 0.5, and 1.5, and 3.5. Now, if you were to add all of these together, let's see what you get. Would that give me a good idea of the spread? Well. These two are going to cancel out. And if I add these two to that, that makes that negative 3.5. That makes it 0. I'll add up to 0. Is 0 really a good description of spread here? Not really. So the problem is, I want to add all these spreads up. But if there's, if I allow them to be their positive and their negatives, these, this, by the way, is called, all right, so this column right here, all of these numbers are deviations. And the sum is, and I have a cool interactive applet you can find uh, on the web page if you want to see that. All right, so the sum is always zero. Now, how can, so when I add them all up, they don't add up to zero? Well, one person said, well, you could do absolute value, and I'm like, you're right, but we didn't. A lot of times when we're trying to do distances, we tend to think, you remember that Pythagorean theorem in geometry? Well, let's try and square things, all right? Because we are talking about distances after all. 
So I'm going to square all these differences. I'm going to square all these deviations. So this is deviation squared. All right. And so 2.5, luckily I'm very good at this, 6.2.25. If you want to learn my tricks, come to numbers. Mental math. 2.25. And this one's 12.25. By the way, I don't have these memorized. I have a method. All right. Then we're going to add these all up. And what we call this is the sum of squares. Now your book uses the symbol SS for that. So if you're doing an assignment for me, uh, don't be surprised if you see that. So I'm going to stop right here and we're going to take, so this is 23.25 slices of pizza squared.